Cheryl Hamada, and I am honored to be emceeing this event this afternoon. Units of our Nikkei veterans are celebrated as the most decorated combat units in U.S. military history, and the military intelligence service was credited with saving countless lives and shortening the war. But these heroics and accomplishments came at a high price. For example, the 442nd Regimental Combat Team is reported to have suffered a casualty rate of 300%. Let us remember all who have passed, those who died in action, those who were missing in action, and all those Japanese American veterans from World War II who are no longer with us today. The planning for this tribute to Nikkei veterans has been a tremendous undertaking by a committee comprised of individuals representing a broad spectrum of our community. The chairman of this committee is Howard Hiyashima. Howard is a Vietnam War veteran. Sure. He is a past commander of the Chicago Nisei Post 1183 of the American Legion, and he is a member of the steering committee of the National Veterans Network. So please join me in welcoming Howard Hiyashima to the stage. I was asked to address the military history of our honorees, but most of you already know their story. I would like to say that it has been my privilege to know many of them personally through my 43 years of membership in the Chicago Nisei Post. The respect and gratitude I have for them, for what they did and continue to do for our country, fellow veterans, and for the community goes far beyond what I can express in words. They are truly men of honor and of great humility. They are quick to tell you their other's valor, but reluctant to speak about themselves. One of the biggest challenges was getting them to attend an event like this because they don't like to be in the limelight. They have impacted my life greatly, and I will forever cherish their comradeship and friendship. I believe Bill Hosokawa in his book, Men of Faith, expressed the significance of the legacy for our honorees well. He wrote, all Japanese Americans can be grateful for their courage and sacrifice. In a broader sense, that gratitude must be shared by all Americans. The Nisei, or second generation Japanese American vets, not only helped us win wars, they brought home afterwards the solemn lesson that we, are, that we as a nation must live up to the ideals we profess. The goal of justice and equality for all has not been fully achieved yet, but the Nisei soldiers have it made it possible to reach. Sydney Yates was always a friend to our community, and we are equally pleased by the support Jan Schakowsky has shown to the Asian American community. Jan Schakowsky is an influential leader in Congress, and we are so pleased that she is able to join us here today. Please welcome Congresswoman Jan Schakowsky. I can't tell you what a tremendous honor it is to be with all of you today. What an extraordinary, what extraordinary service you gave to the United States of America. Even as their friends and family and members and loved ones were being rounded up 
and sent to internment camps, thousands of Japanese Americans made a decision, must have been quite a decision, to volunteer to defend the country they loved. They faced immense discrimination. And despite being US citizens, they were labeled as enemy alien and banned from enlisting in regular military units. Ultimately, these men, you men here, who together with their families were considered a threat by their own government, were allowed to volunteer for the military and put into segregated units. The, 40, the 40, 442nd Infantry Regimental Combat Team, the 100th Infantry Battalion, and military intelligence units. And these segregated units were sent to Europe where they served with great distinction. The 442nd, known as the Go For Broke Regiment, fought in some of the bloodiest battles of the war, becoming one of the most decorated units in US history. In 10 months of combat, over 700 members of the regiment were killed or listed as missing in action. It's just last year, Japanese American World War II veterans finally received the recognition they deserve when, as you heard, they were awarded a Congressional Gold Medal. I was proud to co-sponsor the legislation passed in 2010 that recognized these brave veterans for their service and patriotism. And it was a great joy and pleasure to see the 317 surviving Japanese American World War II veterans receive their gold medals, their gold medals in November of 2011. But it was also a sad moment too, thinking of all those who never knew that they were honored in this way. This long overdue recognition is a critical step toward making amends. The United States government's decision to force Japanese Americans into internment camps during World War II is one of the darkest moments in United States history. We allowed fear to breed discrimination and made persecution official government policy. Yet even as 110,000 of their friends and family were herded into camps, some 20,000 Japanese Americans chose to volunteer to serve their country. And today, we honor that decision and that sacrifice and that service. In 1946, President Harry Truman welcomed the surviving Japanese American soldiers home with the words, quote, you fought not only the enemy, but you fought prejudice, and you have won, unquote. Over half a century later, in the legislation awarding Japanese American World War II veterans a Congressional Gold Medal, the US Congress recognized that, quote, the United States remains forever indebted to the bravery, va valor, and dedication to country these men faced while fighting a two-fronted battle of discrimination at home and fascism abroad. So today, it is my great honor to pay tribute to the Nikkei World War II veterans. These men overcame immense obstacles and prejudice to serve with great distinction in some of the war's most perilous battles. They remind us, all of us, of the importance of patriotism, of serving with honor, and that fear cannot be used as an excuse, a policy of persecution and discrimination. God bless you all and thank you for the opportunity to join you today. Major General James Mukoyama served for over 30 years of active and reserve component service in the Army. 
He was commissioned as a regular Army Infantry Second Lieutenant in 1965 upon his graduation from the University of Illinois. He went on to become the first Asian American in the history of the United States to command an Army division. Among General Mukoyama's decorations are the Distinguished Service Medal, the Silver Star, the Legion of Merit, three Bronze Stars, and the Purple Heart. We're so pleased to have him here with us today. Please welcome General James Mukoyama. The great Roman orator Cicero once said, poor is the nation that has no heroes, but poorer still is the nation that having heroes fails to remember and honor them. I have the special honor to be in the presence of my lifelong personal heroes today. As a youngster growing up right after World War II, I recall the racial taunts I received about being Japanese American and the pride I felt when I responded with the legendary accomplishments of the Nisei soldiers in France. In the United States military, the reputation of the Japanese American soldier is legendary and a standard that I was proud to uphold and would never disgrace. The sacrifice and dedication of the Nisei veterans in the face of di discrimination, both at home and abroad, clearly opened the doors of equal opportunity to subsequent generations of all Asian Americans in the service. And I personally would not have had any chance of becoming a general officer in the Army without their efforts. This afternoon, I look around and see gathered an assembly of heroes. I see faces of those as young citizens served in Europe and the Pacific during World War II. The following comments are taken from a presentation of federal judge Vincent Okamoto, a Japanese-American Vietnam combat veteran, a recipient of two Purple Hearts and the Distinguished Service Cross, our nation's second highest award for valor. Who are these citizen soldier veterans? They come from socioeconomic strata of our society and from all ethnicities and races, from every state and territory of our great union. Every day of our lives, we walk unknowingly among quiet heroes and heroines. A veteran is a young police officer recently returned from his second tour in Afghanistan. A veteran is a grandmother who at 22 years of age went to Vietnam as a young nurse and worked 18 hour days in an evacuation hospital. A veteran is a former high school quarterback who turned down a college football scholarship to volunteer to fight in the Korean War where he won a silver star for heroism. A veteran is an elderly gentleman holding up the checkout line in the supermarket but who once stormed the German machine gun position and helped liberate France. Veterans are many of the men and women assembled here today, each with their own compelling story, each of whom left their homes, families, and loved ones, and were willing to serve with no expectation of reward or even thank you, but went because it was their duty. In our society, some are honored for their great wealth, political power, social position, athletic ability, or entertainment status. But of all the titles in the world, I think the proudest is that of veteran, because it refers to an individual who is willing to sacrifice everything for America. The veterans who wore the uniform of this nation are a special family. These brothers and sisters comprise less than 7% of the population, making them members of an exclusive fellowship forever connected by a shared sense of duty, commitment, and willingness to sacrifice their lives that set them apart and make them different from everyone else in society. So I close in their honor with a quote from the Bible, from the second book of Timothy. The time of my departure has come. 
I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, and I have kept the faith. That passage accurately describes the saga of the Nisei veterans in World War II, for they too fought the good fight, finished the race, and kept faith with America in peace and war. What they achieved speak to the dreams that inspire ordinary people to perform extraordinary acts of courage and self-sacrifice. They speak to us of the value of loyalty, courage, fundamental fairness, and personal dignity, the echoes of duty, honor, and country. This is the legacy of our nation's Nikkei veterans. This is our inheritance we honor today. Thank you very much. At this time, I'd like to introduce Gail Belmont. She is the director of Quilts of Honor. Quilts of Honor is an organization dedicated to providing handmade quilts to those who have served in harm's way, protecting our freedom. So please welcome Gail Belmont. Well, are you guys tired? I'm tired. <laughs> but this is an exceptional event. Um, I'm a country kid, so this is like really fancy to me. So you're gonna have to bear with me. I don't write any speeches, so whatever comes out, comes out, okay? So why I do this is because I'm a veteran like you. I served during the Vietnam era. I'm a bugler, I'm a trumpet player, and I played for guys that were killed during Vietnam in Mississippi and Alabama. So seeing that, it changed my life. And so when this program came up, I said I didn't want anybody to be forgotten at any age. I'm so honored to be here today because you paved the way for veterans like myself. I have a group of ladies and gentlemen that hand make these quilts. We're a nonprofit organization. Each quilt costs an average of $250 to $300 out the door. We have made over 3,000 quilts and we still continue to make them daily. Um, we are small in numbers, but mighty in what we do. It's strictly a labor of love. And why do we do it? In the Civil War, families and friends made quilts for their, their warriors that went off to war. And when they passed, they were buried in those quilts. So we are carrying on American tradition by making these quilts. So today we will give you a labor of love and we hope that you will be able, it will be something that you will carry on to honor and it is a thank you from us to you for your service to your country and your sacrifices. We do things impromptu, so you bear with us. The Major General did not know he was gonna receive this quilt today, but this is a thank you for your service and sacrifice to your country. Thank I would you. like you to take it out so the guys can see it. Thank you to Quilts of Honor. This has just been a, a, a tremendous opportunity to say a thank you. Uh, all you veterans have been the stuff of legend uh, to my generation, Sansei, so to have all of you uh, gathered here, it's about time. It's a wonderful opportunity for all of us to say thank you. Uh, we, have Gail? One, we have one last quilt that we would like to present. Howard, can you step up? Howard, this is on behalf of Quilts of Honor, and Howard definitely deserves this quilt. He's had Vietnam and all his past war experiences, and I'm honored to give you this quilt, and thank you for your service and sacrifice to our country. Oh, thank you so much, well, this program has been a, a tribute to our Nikkei veterans from World War II, but I know there are many other veterans in our audience today, including those who served in other conflicts and those who served in peacetime. We owe all of you our gratitude, and we consider all of you our honorees as well today. 
So will all the veterans in our audience please stand and let's give them all a big round of applause and gratitude. <laughs>